2020 wasn't great for coasters. The virus shut down almost every new coaster, so only a few, like Orion and Candemonium, opened. This means that all of those shut down coasters have been pushed to 2021, along with the newly announced ones. 2021 will be one of the best years for coasters, and I thought it was a good idea to rank the best of the best. These are the top 10 best new for 2021 roller coasters. Number 10, Big Dipper at Luna Park, Sydney. Intamin in July announced a hot racer model. This new type of roller coaster is basically an RMC Raptor, but with a launch. The first one of these was revealed to be heading to Luna Park, Sydney. The name would be Big Dipper, a nod to the classic Big Dipper which operated at the park prior. The ride starts with a small launch before heading into a few little S-curves. This then leads into the second launch, which rockets the train into a non-inverting loop. This non-inverting loop will probably be the best element on the ride. It will provide a twisting airtime moment similar to some RMCs. A whippy sidewinder leads into the second half of the ride. A floater airtime hill drops down into a downwards turn. This downwards turn reminds me of the back-to-back -back transitions on Intimidator 305. The train twists back and forth before leveling out in a corkscrew element which leads into the final brake run. Overall, Big Dipper looks like a fun coaster, but it isn't anything to write home about. The airtime in the second half looks pretty good, but the first half is lacking. While the second half is intense, the first half looks pretty slow and is just a build-up for the finale. Also, the length. This ride is very short and overall is lacking a few key elements. This ultimately places it at number 10. Number 9, Stunt Pilot at Silverwood. 2020 will be full of single rail coasters and Stunt Pilot is one of them. This ride, in contrast to Big Dipper, is an RMC and is more tightly packed. While this ride doesn't have a launch, the rest of the layout makes up for it. Starting with an ejector filled drop, the ride whips into a dive loop. This dive loop throws riders around in one of the whippiest moments ever. Stunt Pilot then leads into the best element of the ride, a twisted airtime hill. This twisted hill looks to provide some of the strongest airtime ever. It throws riders out of their seats while going through a lateral filled moment similar to Steel Vengeance. Unfortunately, this ride has over the shoulder restraints instead of lap bars. These restraints can cause some neck pain during these rapid transitions, and it makes the experience a little bit worse. So why does this ride place at number 9 if it has these bad restraints? Well, the rest of the layout is phenomenal. The ride dives down a drop before going through two more inversions. The first inversion is a tight cutback like on Twisted Timbers, and the second is a pretty whippy corkscrew. One tight final turn leads into the brake run. This ride is short, and it has okay restraints, but overall it still looks better than Big Dipper just because of the layout. Number 8, Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. The third and best single rail coaster places at number 8 on this list. Jersey Devil at Great Adventure looks like it'll be the best single rail coaster to date. While it does have the same restraints as Stump Pilot, its layout is strong and it looks much longer than the prototypes. A steep drop leads into a whippy dive loop. This dive loop looks to be identical to the ones on the prototypes, so it'll be a very whippy element. The train rockets through a sustained ejector hill, which will definitely bring the negatives. Overall, this ride is much more focused on airtime than intensity. A whippy twist leads into a zero-g stall. This stall looks to be similar to Goliath's stall, and it'll bring the hang time. A very tight and whippy turn looks to bring the lateral G's before diving down into a zero G roll. This roll, again, looks to be fast and whippy, which actually might be the best element on the ride. Steel Vengeance's zero G roll is phenomenal, and RMC is a master with these elements, so it'll be a great element. After a drop off the mid course, the train goes through a positive filled turn before heading into its finale. Jersey Devil's finale is a bunch of small ejector hills, two of them twisted. Overall, the Jersey Devil feels much more complete than the prototypes, and its better and longer layout places it at the number 8 spot. Number 7, the Mock Rides Extreme Spinning Coaster at Plopsaland. Located in Belgium is Plopsaland. The park is currently home to five roller coasters, including a fun launch coaster called Anubis. In 2021, the park will be reopening an unnamed Mock Rides Extreme Spinning Coaster. This coaster will be similar to Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. This spinning coaster looks to be much more intense than Time Traveler, and it has better elements. The train slowly spins through a JoJo roll out of the station. This hang time filled element while spinning is sure to cause a unique experience. A launch boosts the train up into a small curve before dropping down a very steep drop, which reminds me a lot of Time Traveler's first drop. The train bends through a banana roll. Keep in mind, through all of these elements, the cars are spinning rapidly. That means riders are experiencing a banana roll, similar to Steel Curtain, while being spun around so they don't even know what way they are facing. 
A vertical loop leads into a crazy zero-g roll. This roll looks a lot faster than Time Traveler's inversions, so a whippy transition plus a spinning car makes this one of the best elements on any spinning coaster. A tight positive filled turn leads into a twisted airtime hill. This, in my opinion, looks to be very odd. Being thrown out of your seat while banked and spinning would be a fun and weird element at the same time. The second launch occurs while going over a fast airtime moment similar to Copperhead Strike. A twisted dive loop occurs, again while spinning. This dive loop reminds me of Stormrunner's Flying Snake Dive. What's different is that while going through this fast and whippy element, riders are spinning rapidly. A few more turns and airtime hills lead to the final break run of the ride. This looks to be one of the best mock ride coasters in the world. The spinning adds another layer of excitement to this airtime and inversion packed speed machine. Number 6, the unnamed mock rides launch coaster going to Suzhou Paradise Forest World. I probably pronounced that wrong. This ride may not be known by a lot of people, and I recently found this ride and was shocked to see how good it looked. This ride is a beast of a coaster, with its 203 foot tall top hat and its high speed. And yes, this ride has some lap bars, as it is a mock rides coaster. The ride starts with a very fast launch before twisting up the 200 plus foot tall top hat. Diving back down the floater filled top hat, the ride enters a very high speed inversion, similar to Max Force. This inversion will be one of the whippiest coaster elements ever, as the train is hauling while going through this inversion. The train whips through a dive loop before heading down into a speedy ejector hill. This hill, combined with the comfortable mock rides lap bars, will cause for one of the best airtime moments ever. A tight valley with positive G's leads into a cobra roll. This cobra roll is intertwined with the top hat, which causes for some interesting interactions with the two elements. After the fast cobra roll, the train enters one last inversion. This time, it's a positive filled loop, which intertwines with the cobra roll. That's right, this ride has a top hat, cobra roll, and a loop, all intertwined with each other. After a few more sharp apexes on ejector hills, the ride rockets into the brakes. This ride looks ridiculous and is definitely deserving of the number 6 spot. It's just a tad too short. Number 5, Abyssus at Energylandia. Vacoma has been on the rise since 2016. They released Formula in 2016, their first new gen model, called the Space Warp. Then they released the Bermuda Blitz with Black Coaster, and now they are turning into the new Intamin with Abyssus. Abyssus starts with a small launch before heading into a small ejector pop. The train heads through a downwards helix before going through some rapid transitions similar to Cheetah Hunt. Guests dive into a foggy trench, which leads into the second launch. The second launch boosts the train up to a high speed of 62 miles per hour. Abyssus then takes a sharp turn, which provides the positives and heads into the top hat. The train dives in a floater-filled drop before entering a positive-filled loop. This ride has everything you need. While some elements are a bit weak, it still provides airtime intensity and rapid train. The train then hauls through a twisted airtime hill, which may be the best element on the ride. Entering the Batwing, Abyssus dives downwards through an inversion into another foggy tunnel. The train is going at very fast at this point, and then turns upwards in a very sharp valley. Exiting the Batwing, the train takes a sharp right-hand turn before whipping in the other direction. This rapid transition may be the whippiest part of the ride, or on any Vacoma coaster in general. Guests on board take a sharp turn to the left before going through a very intense ejector hill. Some of these ejector hills remind me of RMC Hill. More turns, hills, and a corkscrew lead to the final break run of the ride. Overall, Abyssus is a fantastic coaster deserving of the number 5 spot with its intense and whippy moments and its phenomenal airtime hills. Number 4, Velocicoaster at Universal Islands of Adventure. Velocicoaster is basically a step up from Abyssus, with more airtime twists and it has a theme. This theme is of course the Velociraptors from Jurassic Park. This ride has been under construction for years now, and in September it was confirmed that this beast would be coming to Universal. After a launch through some elaborate rock work, the train enters two back-to-back -back inversions, each very whippy. The first is an Immelman, which rockets the train back down through the rock work. The second is a dive loop, which leads the train into a whippy turn in Ejector Hill. More sharp turns and overbanks through the rock work lead into the second and faster launch. This 75 mile per hour launch rockets the train up to the massive top hat, which hangs riders over the steep drop. After the floater filled drop, riders enter a zero G stall, providing the best hang time in the entire state of Florida. The train enters a big helix. The first half of the helix is with an overbank turn and an outer banked airtime hill, which is sure to cause some great laterals and negatives. The second half is another overbank before leading into the whippiest moment of the ride. This moment is a very fast inversion right over the lake in the center of the park. This is sure to cause a head chopper with the water and a fun lateral filled element. Finally, the train takes one last whip to end off the ride. If you like theming, airtime, intensity, hang time, whippiness, or literally anything in a coaster, you will love this ride, which is why it places at number 4. 
Number 3, Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens, Tampa. Another wicked coaster in Florida makes the top 5, and this one is even better than the previous. The tallest, fastest, and steepest hybrid coaster is Iron Gwazi, and it has even better airtime intensity and whippiness than the previous coaster on the list. The 91 degree beyond vertical drop is a good start to this conjecture filled coaster, and this massive outer bank curve makes the beginning even better. Riders are whipped around in an airtime filled moment before diving back to the ground at 76 miles per hour. Then Iron Gwazi enters the death roll. The death roll is a downwards barrel roll, which may be the best element on the ride. While gaining speed, the riders twist in a whippy element with tons of head choppers. A sharp and whippy overbank turn leads into an outer bank wave turn. While whipping to the side, riders are banked 90 degrees and being flung out of their seats. And if that doesn't sound exciting, maybe this zero-g stall does. This hang time filled moment follows with the theme of whippiness on this coaster. Finally, the ride ends with more and more airtime hills with twists in between. This ride is intense, speedy, and one of the best coasters ever built. But it doesn't even compare with number 2 and 1. Number 2 basically does everything this ride does with more airtime and intensity. Number 2, Pantheon at Busch Gardens, Williamsburg. This ride is iron gauzy, but better. Each element is taken to the extreme on Pantheon, each being better than the previous. The first launch leads into a fast zero-g roll. Riders then whip around through two airtime hills before entering the second launch. Riders accelerate into the top hat, but then roll back. The track before switches and riders enter a vertical segment of track while going backwards. This ride goes backwards, as if it needed more reasons to be better than Iron Gwazi. Finally, going through the top hat, the train dives down by the river in a very intense turn before going into an outer bank turn. This outer bank looks absolutely absurd, and it will provide some of the best airtime in the country. The longest zero-g stall basically ever occurs next, and I don't even know if I can handle being upside down for that long. That is how ridiculous this element is. Hanging upside down for 5 seconds is one of the best and craziest elements ever thought of. The ride ends with a bang. Some rapid fire transitions lead into the brake run. This ride, in my opinion, looks way better than Iron Gwazi because of its crazier elements and its backward segments. Number 1, Conda at Wallaby, Belgium. This ride is an airtime machine and a half, with over 15 moments of airtime and 70 plus miles per hour. The 80 degree, 164 foot drop is a great way to kick off the ride. A twisting sensation similar to Expedition G-Force is found on this whoopee drop. A huge floater hill provides some of the most sustained airtime on any coaster in the world before entering what very well could be the most insane element on any coaster. This outer bank turn throws riders to the side while providing some ridiculous floater airtime. And it doesn't stop there. A non-inverting cobra roll occurs with the train heading upwards before twisting rapidly at the top. It then does the same thing but downwards. And if you thought it couldn't get any crazier, you'd be wrong. The train takes a very tight turn before going into an RMC-like wave turn. Think of this as Iron Gwazi and Pantheon, but with even crazier elements, longer, and overall just a better experience. You think I'm wrong for saying that this is better than Iron Gwazi and Pantheon. Well, I hope this finale proves you wrong with an airtime hill, a twist to double down, which provides the laterals and the negatives, and not one, not two, not three, not four, but five airtime hills, all providing ejector airtime. This, in my opinion, is the coaster deserving of the number one spot. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below what you think the best 2021 coaster will be, and have a great rest of your day.